Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here and today you'll be planning, building and developing your small borough into a major metropolis. You're trying to end up with the largest population and you'll do so by raising your reputation by building museums or recycling plants. But you'll also be trying to gain income by building places like the new car dealership to help your borough thrive. Suburbia Collector's Edition is for 1 to 5 players, plays in 90 minutes, is for ages 14 and up, and published by Bezier Games. Today, we'll be doing a rule school where I'll teach you how to set up and play the game so that you don't have to read the rule book yourself. Now I've placed timestamps below me in the description of this video just in case you want to jump to a specific section of the rules. Without further ado, let's get started. Suburbia Collector's Edition is a city building game for one to five players where you'll be trying to have the highest population at the end of the game. You'll be gaining population directly by purchasing tiles like homeowners associations into your borough. And you'll be gaining reputation by playing certain tiles based upon what's adjacent to it and other tiles can trigger off of what you just placed. And sometimes you can gain reputation for certain types of buildings in every player's borough. And gaining reputation is great because every round you'll get that much population, which essentially is points. But you also need lots of income because that money is going to help you buy better tiles that come out as the game goes on. The game has public goals that you're shooting for like most residential buildings or most contiguous lakes to get population at the end of the game. But each player will also get a secret goal. And the Collector's Edition comes with three expansions that give you new tiles, goals, and new ways to play, along with amazing game trays for storage, and they help you play the game as well. I'm going to be teaching you how to set up and play the base game for two to four players. The first thing you'll do is get all of the tiles, there's three different types, A's, B's, and C's, and you'll place them lakeside up like this in the same stack. So this is all A's, this is all B's, this is all C's. On the back side of these, they all have different types of places like the farm, but you're going to have them all so they are all lakeside up in three different stacks, A, B, and C. Now you're going to want to make sure that you're not using any of the tiles from any of the three expansions that are in this collector's edition. And you'll know that by looking for these icons in the lower right of the tile. The tie is for the Suburbia Inc. The star is for Five Star, and the moon is for Nightlife. Make sure none of the tiles you're using have any of those icons on them. You won't need them playing the base game. Next, you're going to get the market tray, and you're going to place this market board right in the middle of it with the blue side up because we're playing up to four players here. Now, once you shuffle all these A stack tiles, you're going to place seven of these face up in this real estate market. And so it might look something like this now. Now you know that it's seven because, well, number one, when you get past seven, it says no more here. Plus on the A section, all of the bottoms here say seven. Now for the rest of this, we're gonna look at this chart here, whether it's you know two, three, or four players. Of course, the solo game's not part of this video, but you'd use this as well. We're gonna set up for three players, for example. So in addition to the seven, we're now going to take 11 of these tiles and place it right here. The rest can be placed back in the box because you're not going to be using every tile every game. Next, we're going to go to the B tiles. Now, you may see on this market board here, red tiles. Now, those are challenge and bonus tiles that are only used in expansion, so you don't use those here. So after the A's, we're going to go right up to the B's. So from that big stack of B tiles that we had, we're going to sh make sure those are all shuffled up, and we're going to take 15 of those, and we're going to place them on top of the A tiles. Then for the C tiles, for three players, we're going to take nine of those shuffled C tiles from that original stack we had. We're going to place it on top of the big stack now. Then we're going to take nine more C tiles, not the ones that we've already placed, but from the supply that we had at the beginning. And we're going to shuffle in this yellow one more round tile with these nine ones. Now this one more round also has a C lake on the backside, but it says one more round here. So we're going to flip it down like this. We're going to shuffle in with these nine tiles, then we're going to place these on top. Then we're going to take five more C tiles from our supply, shuffle them up like this, and then place them on top of the whole stack. And now that we have this game stack of tiles ready, we're going to stack it on this market tray and then cover it with the tile tower. So first we'll stack it all on here as mentioned. I found it easiest to place this, the tile C pointing this way so that that point edge matches where this point edge is. Then the tower slides just over the tiles like this and then you put the top on it just like that. 
Now these two spaces will stay empty. If you were playing with the expansions, these would be bonus and challenge tiles, and those would score if you were placing these tiles on there. But since we didn't, because we're not playing the expansion, don't worry about it. Next, we're going to set up the goal tiles. One of the game tray's lids acts as a way to hold the goal tiles. You're going to shuffle up all the base game goal tiles, making sure that you don't have any goal tiles that have any of the three expansion icons on them. Then you're going to select a number of these equal to the amount of players. In this case, we're playing with three players, so we've placed three of them out there. These are open public goals that players are going to try to get, and these will get scored at the end of the game. For example, having the highest income, having the most residential tiles, or having the most contiguous lakes in their borough. And those are going to score a certain amount of population. Next, in the resources tray, you can place money. We have the 10s, the 5s, and the 1s. You're also going to be placing specific tiles in these three spots. You're going to place four suburbs, community parks, and heavy factories in each of these spots. Now, these are a little easier to find because the backs of them look like this. And so they don't have the A, Bs, and Cs. You can find those. These ones are only used for five players. You're going to place four of them, of each of them, in each of these slots here. For example, this spot has all four suburbs, all four community parks, and all four heavy factories. Now, these empty slots are for additional wood markers that you can purchase from Bezier Games' website. And these just help the look and feel of your boroughs by placing things on there like airports, uh, in restaurants, and schools. And they also help you track certain things throughout the game a little bit easier as well. And if you wanted to upgrade these coins to metal coins, you could do that as well at their website. Now, each player is going to set up their own borough. They're going to select a color, and they're going to get a player board of that color. They're also going to get wooden pieces of their color. The round one is income, and it starts at zero, as denoted by this arrow here. And the square one is reputation, and it is denoted by right here, starting on the one. They'll also have a meeple. We'll tell you what to do with that in just a moment. You're also going to get 15 coins, and you're going to get three investment markers that look like this and have a 2x on them. Each player will also take a suburb, community park, and heavy factory. These are the same tiles that we had showed you in that other tray earlier, remembering that they have an easier back to find these. Now the suburbs will be the closest, and it's going to be in your middle slot, just above where it says income, then the community park on top, and then the heavy factory like this. You also have the option to flip that board to the other side and use it from top down building this way. If you do that, remember that to have the suburbs closest, then the community park, and then the heavy factory. Same order, but it's going to be reversed because this is now going from top to bottom. But in this video, we're going to go bottom to top. That's the way I prefer to play. And also it has the city names on this side as well. Next, you're going to set the scoreboard up. You are not going to be using the side that has these stars. That's for the expansion. So flip the board over to make sure it does not have those. It should look like this with no stars on it. And you'll place everyone's meeple, which is their population marker. This essentially is points in the game on two. Notice this white arrow points right to the number two, just like that. Then each player is going to get two random goals face down. They get to look at both of these and see which one they want to keep. Now these are secret, but I'm showing them to you. For example, most money or fewest amount of lakes. Let's say we go with fewest amount of lakes. We will then return this one back to the box, and this one will kept face down so other players can't look at it, but you of course can look at it anytime. Also give each player one of these double-sided player aid tiles that will help them out throughout the game. And finally, you're gonna randomly select the start player and give them this giant tower to denote that. The object of the game is to gain population, so at the end of the game, you have the highest population. And you'll be gaining population in different ways, like placing tiles in your borough by accomplishing certain private and public goals. And each turn, you'll be getting population based upon where your reputation is. The game is played over multiple rounds. Each round, each player will take a turn in clockwise order, and each turn, a player will go through four phases. Now, in the first step of your turn, most of the time you're going to be placing one building tile. Now, to do that, you actually have three options. The first option is to take one of these tiles from the real estate market. Now, to do so, each tile will have a cost on the left side, and it possibly will have a cost above it. These first two slots don't cost anything additional, but the tiles that have come out most recently will cost more. So, if I wanted to buy this homeowners association tile, it cost me six, plus two, I would have to spend $8 of money into the supply. And anytime you gain or lose money, you'll be interacting with the resource tray. 
Then I'm going to place this tile adjacent to any other tile in my burrow. So let's say I want to place it here. Now when you place a tile, the first thing you'll do is if it has anything in the upper right, you'll activate it. In this case, it says we gain one population. So you would immediately gain one population. Again, this essentially is the score track. Keep in mind that not everything is going to adjust population. If you had bought one of these two tiles, you would have adjusted different things right away. If we had placed this one, this round icon is income, shown as the round icon here, income. This would have said plus one. If I had placed this in my burrow, I would have immediately moved this plus one. However, if I had placed this one, square is the reputation denoted by the square. Anytime you see a red lining around something, it's going to have a minus value. So if I had placed the slaughterhouse in my burrow, I would have gotten immediately minus two reputation. So those are the first steps that you do when you place a tile is that upper right. The next thing you do is look at the bottom of the tile that you just placed and see if it has a conditional effect. In this case, it says $2 for every residential building. Now this every residential building means in everyone's burrow, anytime you see the word every, including your own, and it includes this tile. So we actually have two residential tiles here. We're playing with three players, which means there's two other players that also started with the suburbs because everyone started with one of those. So totally, we're going to have two, four, and then for the other two players having the suburbs, six, eight. We're actually gonna gain $8, which is great because we only spent eight for this. Essentially, we got this for free because it cost six plus the two from the real estate market. Next, you'd look at each tile adjacent to the one we just placed and see if they have any conditional effects. These are the only two adjacent tiles. This one has no effects. This one says plus one reputation for each adjacent uh, industrial, residential, and commercial. Well, this is a residential. We place it here. So that's going to give us one more reputation. And so here we'll bump that reputation up by one. Now, if you remember, we actually started the game with two population, and that's because everyone started with the suburbs, which gave us that. And we actually started with one reputation, and that's because of the way that these tiles interact with each other. This one had given us one reputation for each adjacent of these three buildings. There were two of them, but this one gives us minus one for being next to a civic building, and so that evens out to a one, and that's sort of how you started with that specific reputation of one. Next, you'd look for conditional effects on non-adjacent tiles. Let's say before we bought this one that we just placed, this one was already here. And on our turn, we just bought that tile, we placed it here. We have done everything we've done up to this point, but we would look for any non-adjacent tiles. This one, another homeowners association. This one said $2 for every residential. Well, because this is a residential building as shown here, we would gain $2 because of the interaction of this tile, which is not adjacent. Now keep in mind that some tiles like this one can affect you on other players' turns. So if another player places a residential building, you'll get another $2 because it says for every. So you have to keep track of what you're building and what others are building. And other tiles can do this too. Let's say later in the game, we played this skyscraper, we'd get plus three income. However, we would get minus one income for every skyscraper, one with this icon on it, built after this one. So other players could build a skyscraper and we would have to go down one. So you have to watch what other players are building as well. Now, instead of taking a tile from the real estate market, as we previously showed, you can decide to take a basic tile. Now, these tiles, uh, are the suburbs, community parks, and heavy factories in the resource tray. These are the same three starting tiles that everyone starts out with. By the way, these are limited, so once they run out, there aren't any left. Now, when you buy one of these, you basically pay the cost that you see there. For example, the suburbs, we would spend three. You'd follow all the steps I showed earlier about what to do when you place a tile, but then you must discard a tile from the board and you only pay what's on the real estate market. So if I want to discard this one because I don't want someone else to have it, it's $10 all the way down to free. So let's say I didn't want to spend any extra money. I would discard this one for free. Now the third possible option you have when taking a tile is using it as a lake. Now what you do is you select any of the tiles that are in this real estate market and you pay only the cost of the real estate market just like we just did when we discarded. This one would cost 10, this one would be free. Let's say we take this one for free. Again, always placing a tile adjacent to one of the other tiles, but to lake it, you flip it over and you place it, again, adjacent to any tiles. This is $2 for each adjacent buildings of these types. So we get two and $4. Now keep in mind, as you add tiles around here, this is an adjacent tile that will then give you $2 every time you add a tile around it. 
Now those are all the three options when placing a tile either from the real estate market, a basic tile, or making it a lake. Now I said you do that most of the time. Instead of placing a tile, you can place an investment marker. Now to do this, you'll take one of your three investment markers and you'll place it on any tile that you have in your borrow that doesn't already have one of those in them. Essentially, you'll have to pay for this a second time. So this is $6, we would need to spend another $6. But then we activate this tile again, which means we'd get another population and we get another $2 for every residential in everyone's borough. Now this one essentially counts as two of them because this essentially is two of these tiles. This would be two tiles, three, and then we'd count up all the other ones and the other players, $2 per in this example. Now this does not affect conditional effects from adjacent buildings. Like this one says plus one reputation for residential. Because we place this here, it doesn't mean we go up here because we're only activating this tile. However, this still does stay here. And if let's say later we placed something like this, which is another homeowners association, $2 for every residential, this one counts as two tiles for that. Now, after you've either placed a building or an investment marker, you go to the second step of your turn, which is to collect or pay money based on your income. Now, depending on where this is, and again, this is gonna fluctuate depending on what you've done and what others have done on their turns, uh, you're going to look at this, and if it's zero, you simply don't do anything. If it's a positive amount, you'd get that much money from the supply, and if it's a negative amount, you have to pay that much money to the supply. If you can't pay the full amount, for every dollar you can't pay, you go down one on that population score track. And if you're ever at zero and you need to spend more money and you can't, nothing else happens. Then you'd go to the third, let's just say this was here. You are going to uh, adjust your population based on reputation. So here, if it was here, we would just simply go up one on the population score track. If we were down here, you would actually go backwards on the score track. So let's say in this case we were to go up one, we would just go like that. Now as the game goes on, you'll see that there's these different red roofs here. Anytime you were to pass one of these, this represents your borough growing and it costs more to maintain and its small town charm will decrease. Now when you go over one of those, you'll decrease both your income and your reputation by one spot. Now it's possible to pass more than one red roof as you're moving up the score track at once. And for each red roof that you pass, you will go down one in each of those. Now, sometimes when you place a tile, you'll have multiple adjustments, but immediately when you pass one of those roofs, you'll adjust this before you do any other adjustments from that tile. And if either of these ever get pegged to the bottom amount, it can't go any further. Now after the third step in your turn, which is adjusting the population, you'll go to the last step in your turn, which is adding a tile to the real estate market. You'll grab the bottom tile from the tower and you'll place it in this empty spot and then just slide all the ones down just like this. This will now be in the most expensive slot. And then you just go to the next player's turn clockwise. And keep in mind those four steps to each turn is on the back of those player aids that you have. Now turns will continue and as we go through tiles, the A's will finish, then you'll go through the B's and then eventually the C's. And if you remember, somewhere shuffled into the middle part of those C's is a one more round tile. This means that everyone's gonna play one more full round beginning with the start player when it gets to them and everyone will have an equal amount of turns. This will get discarded and a new one will come out to replace it. And you continue to play turns until you end up playing one more full round, again, going starting with the start player and going through everybody. Which means if this was the second of the three players that had drawn that, that second player would take a turn, the third player would take a turn, and then it would start with that start player again and all players would get one more turn. Now in final scoring those two steps, you're essentially gonna score the goals and then converting money to population. Now for the public goals you'll do first, you'll look at each of these and you'll award the amount of population shown for whoever does this. For example, the highest income, the most residential in their borough or the most contiguous lakes. Now, if any or more than one player is tied for any of these, no one gets that bonus. Then each player is gonna flip over their private goal and see if they actually have fulfilled that or not. If so, they'll get that population. If not, they won't. And keep in mind, only the owner of the private goal can score this, which means if another player had the fewest amount of lakes, they would not get this. And when adjusting population in this final scoring, ignore going over red roofs as they do not make your income and reputation go down at all. Next, you'd convert money to population. For every five coins you have, you would get one population. So in this case, we have 10. So we would get two population, that would go to the supply. And you'll keep the remaining because that is part of a tiebreaker. At this point, whoever's the highest on the population track is the winner. However, if it's tied between those tied players, and if it's tied, the player with the higher reputation wins. If it's still tied, the player with the higher income wins. 
If it's still tied, the player with the leftover remaining money wins, and if it's still tied, you play another game of Suburbia to see who wins. And if you want to know specific rules of all the individual tiles, there is a guide that comes in the game that talks about every tile in the game in detail. Well, I hope this helps you dive right into Suburbia Collector's Edition and get to the fun quicker than you normally would if you had to read the rulebook yourself. Now, if you have further questions about the rules, I placed a link below me in the description of this video, and that's the best place to ask them because not only will I be notified, but so will Bezier Games.